Oh, happy paper people. How is everybody on a Saturday night? Hi, Judy. Good to see you. Hey, Margie. Who else is here? Let's see. They were here a little early doing a little chatting. Hi, Toby. How are you? Hope you're feeling better. Hey, Edna. It's been a while. I haven't seen you. Oh, hello. Margie Mellon. It's been a while. I haven't seen you either. Welcome. Good to see you. <clears throat> what is that? What is what? I don't know. Hello, everybody. It is so good to see you. Candy's here with me tonight, as you can see. Hi. Right there is Candy off to the side. She always makes herself small right away <laughs> instead of sharing the screen until it's time to go. Okay, so it is six o'clock straight up. We decided to go live one minute early. <clears throat> Hopefully, people get their notification and hop on in here pretty quickly. As you can tell, I don't have a whole lot of voice. So we are going to get right to it tonight. Candy's going to do the reading and the chatting and the laughing for me so I can try to save my, save my uh, little voice that there is. And um, tonight's folio is, it is very simple, but it is so much fun. Uh, I'm, okay, this is inspired by May May. I know some of you watch May May. And she said, I love this one. I just can't stop making it. And I thought, huh, I'll try it. She's right. I can't stop making it either. <laughs> it is a yeah, lot. Margie is here. Did you see that? Did I miss? Yep, Margie Mellon. We got two Margies tonight. Uh oh, we are in trouble. Oh, we're in double trouble. <laughs> double Margie trouble. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I'm going to show you the prototype that we are going to make, and then we're going to get right into making it. And when we're done, I will show you a couple others that I've made with variations. Because uh, as, as soon as you know how to make the base, you can do all kinds of things with it. And it is super, super fun. Hey, Sheila's here. Hi, Sheila. Good to see you. Okay, so this is the folio that we are making. And you'll notice it's Lady Vagabond. Um, I found that this is a great one for those larger images. There's some paper packs that we really, really like, but they have large images on them. And we don't know what to do with them. So this is a great one for that. This one is closed with magnets. It doesn't have to be magnets. It can be a tie around. It can be elastic. It can be an eyelet and whatever kind of closure you want. The same thing as everything else. This one I have embellished with some uh, dimensional items added on here. Okay, so Lady Vagabond opens up. Oop, I thought I took all the cards out. I just want you to see the folio. You know how to do cards. Okay, pocket, pocket. That's ah, full of cards. I'll just leave it full of cards. But I want you to see your telescope there. And then this one is fun. Where's oh, it's the other side. Okay, there's half of her library. And it wraps around. There's the other half of her library. All these great big things that we don't know what to do with. It was just perfect for this. And look at that giant clock that we never know what to do with. And this is the clear. Um, die cut. This guy is the clear die cut. Then you got the back. There's your airship. I couldn't decide where to cut it off. I wanted to get the Lady Vagabond up here. I decided after the fact that I would rather have left the bottom of the airship on and cut this off here because I could have put something that said Lady Vagabond. Okay, so that's what we're going to make. It is super easy. So I'll leave that here for us to reference to. You need three pieces of cardstock and you will want these three pieces of cardstock they're going to be the base so you just want them to match with whatever paper you choose to decorate it with um, for example if I'm doing joy of life I'd probably use craft if I'm doing day by day I would use black I think I only have three here <clears throat> I'll do this one because um, I haven't used blue yet. This is Sunset Beach. This is one of the new Minte ones. And I've chosen a dark blue. And as we get into it, I think you'll see why. It doesn't have a ton of dark blue. And that's kind of the reason it needs it. It's perfect. Because, yeah. Okay. All right. So let me set this off to the side. We can reference it. You're going to need a paper trimmer. And you're going to need your score.
scoreboard. We can set the paper off for a minute because we're not going to use it yet. <clears throat> we get scoreboard is first. Try to get everything close by and organized. There we go. Okay, scoreboard is first. We have three identical pieces of cardstock. I suppose you could use three different colors if they all match with your paper. We're going to take the first one and put it down on the 11 inch side, eight and a half by 11. I think you probably could already tell that. Eight and a half by 11 pieces. We are going to score it. Hi, at Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Good to see you. We're going to score it at three. We're going to score it at nine. And we're going to score it at nine and a quarter. Three, nine, nine and a quarter. Okay, we're going to take the second piece and do the same thing. Three, nine, and nine and a quarter. Okay, the third piece is not the same. The third piece is right down the middle. So it's 11 inches. We're going to score it at five and a half. Five and a half right there. Oops, didn't realize that was sticking up. If I do funky things, I'm just not feeling super great. So just ignore me, follow Candy. <laughs> if I do funky things, Candy take over. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, we are done with the scoreboard for the entire night. So you may put that away. <clears throat> now we are going to take the one, the last one that is scored at five and a half, and set that aside for a minute. <clears throat> All right, I need to remember that I don't need to talk so loud. Hang on, let me just check my audio settings here. Yeah, we're good. Okay, I have to remember I can speak softly, and you can still hear. So. Speak softly, carry a big stick, right, Candy? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We are going to fold this on the score marks. And remember to help keep your paper from cracking. If I scored it here, I'm going to fold it away from my score. So the side that has the bump on it, the mountain, you kind of think that's where you're supposed to fold it, but it's not. You're supposed to fold it towards the mountain away from the valley towards the mountain. And since these are just solid pieces of cardstock, then it doesn't matter which side you scored it on. Okay. And then this side, we have two to fold it on. And if you already folded this one this way, this will already be set to go. We're going to fold it toward the mountain. I'm doing the farthest one in first. And they're so close together, I kind of go down and give it a little bit of push with my fingernail to make sure it doesn't just cross over and catch the other one. Because, you know, some of us are more coordinated than others. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm going to do... Hi, Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Then I'm going to do the outside one. And that quarter inch right there is your gusset for the folio. So when you fill it up with stuff, it will stay closed. Okay, so fold the outer one. And I'm not too worried about um, burnishing them down too hard right now. We'll do that later when we come to them. Right now, I just want to get them folded so that I can see what I'm working with and where my lines are for gluing. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. So I'm going to find the side with the mountain on it, and I'm going to fold towards the mountain. Margie says, you'll be folding about the mountain when she folds. <laughs> Margie, you're not supposed to make me laugh. That was funny. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, that was good. Although, you know, laughing does take my mind off not feeling well. So, okay, let's hurry and get this folding done so we can get on to the fun stuff. 
I do want to make sure it's folded straight because that will affect the folio closing straight. Okay, I got one more fold right there. Now I got that going through my head, Margie. That's hilarious. <laughs> Not even Thanksgiving yet. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to set both of these in front of me, and they are looking identical. The, the large fold on the left, the smaller fold on the right. The large fold on the left, the smaller fold on the right. Okay. So I am going to, I'm going to kind of get that one to lay out flat. I'm going to fold the one on the right in and I'm going to glue the back of this one to the front of this little flap. Now I'm showing you before I do it because <coughs> first of all, we're going to put the glue on the flap because then we know exactly where to stop, right? But you've got two folds right here. You've got two score marks. We need to stop before the first score mark, and when you put it up here, once you've got glue on it and you put it up here, get real close, but not on top of the score mark, you can pick this up and test it to make sure that you can fold it. Because if you get too close to that score mark, you will not be able to fold this, and it's like the spine of your book. You won't have a spine of your book. So let's get some glue, any glue you want to use. You could even use um, score tape on this if you want. Parts of it are good for score tape. Well, probably even most of this. Oh, I knew I left that off too long before. i got to unplug my art glitter glue. All right, so I like to always put the, the glue on the smallest piece of the two that I'm gluing together so I know where to stop. Otherwise, I would totally be guessing on the larger piece. And I don't want to get too close to the edge, but I can always go to the edge and stick this little uh, point in and add a little bit more on the edge if I need to somewhere. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take this and put it, set it on top of it. And I want to make sure not to go over that first score mark. So when I set that down, I'm going to try to line them up as perfectly as I can. I'm going to fold this up and make sure I haven't blocked that score mark. Just like that. It'll fold up. But I'm okay. And then I'm going to burnish that down. So if you turn it over, you should have that smaller piece glued right onto the big piece. And now your two pieces of cardstock are together. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to take the, la the third piece that we uh, scored right down the middle. And we're going to fold that one. Again, fold away from the valley and fold towards the mountain. And I want to line this up so that I get a good straight fold. Just in case I scored it wrong, crooked, because I did notice that my paper was um, kind of, what's the word, bubbling up. I wasn't holding it down tight. So I'm not sure that I've got a good straight. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now this one is going to go onto this little flap that we just created. Now you have two choices here. You can either glue this flap down and make this one solid piece, or you can just glue the top and the bottom. And I like to put a little bit along the side here. And when you put that down, that leaves a pocket right here. That is completely your choice. So in the Lady Vagabond, you can see that I left it open and made a pocket out of it. So then there's two pockets there. And this is the one that's folded in half, half and the second half there. Okay, so I will do that again. And I am going to put my thumb on this side because I don't want any glue on that side. So I'm gonna glue across the top, 
pretty big pocket so I don't have to get too close to the edge. And across the bottom, boy, I am really not steady today. <laughs> it's, looks like um, a three-year-old gluing. And I like to put a little um, bead across or down this side. <laughs> oh my goodness, Candy, this is funny. But Eric glues way better than I do. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get this in tight. Right in tight next to that. Okay, as tight as I can there. And then I'm going to push this down. And the glue on the top and the bottom. And then that bead that I put down the side right there. It is a pocket right there. But I'm going to give it a minute to completely adhere and dry. Won't take very long. It's our glitter glue. While that's drying, come over to the left end. We've got this flap here. We're going to do the same thing on this flap to glue it down to make a pocket. Only you don't need anything down the side. Only the top and the bottom. A little bead down across the top and across the bottom. Okay, and then we'll fold that down. All right, so we have a pocket there. Okay, so if you fold this flap down, fold this over, fold this flap over, there's your folio. Literally, three pieces of paper. It's awesome. It's easy. Every level of crafter can do this one and you can take it as ornate as you want in decorating it. You can add other things to it. And like I said, I'll show you a few after we've done this, but just this basic folio with three pieces of paper, I think is awesome. It's still got flips and flaps and pockets. Oh my. All right. Let's set that aside for a minute and let's get the paper that you've chosen to decorate it with, to cover it with. And now you'll need a paper trimmer. Your paper and your paper trimmer. Okay, so I've got the paper trimmer. And I'm going to use Sunset Beach. <clears throat> the first thing that I like to do before I start cutting up my paper is choose which scene of which piece of paper I want to be my front cover. Because that's the first thing that's seen, and I really like that to be pretty. And so that's what I'm going to choose first, is what's going to be my front cover. So if you want to look and, and through... Before you, before you do that, score it one more time and show them how to put it together. Score a couple more pieces, or you want me to score a couple more pieces? Oh, score three more. Okay, put them together. Show okay. them how to put them together. How to put it together? Yeah, I've got some right here. Okay, <clears throat> all you. What am I using? Blue. I'll grab some crafts right here. Okay, let's score it one more time. I don't mind making another one. I love these. <clears throat> all right, scoreboard. Three pieces of cardstock. <clears throat> Hmm. We're going to take the first piece of cardstock and we're going to score it at three inches, at nine inches, and nine and a half. So there's three. Whoops, make sure I have it straight. Nine, nine and a quarter, not nine and a half. I, oh, I'm sorry. Holy cow. Thank you, Candy, for staying on top of me. Three, nine, and nine and a quarter. Thank you. It is nine and a quarter, not nine and a half. <coughs> I drink, need to drink some of my pepper water. Here. Okay, that's the first piece. Second piece is identical. Three, nine, and nine and a quarter. Hmm. <coughs> Three, nine, and nine and a quarter. 
Okay, so now I've got two that are identical and I've got the last piece. The last one is going to be scored right down the middle, which is five and a half. Five and a half. Okay, and, and that's all you need the scoreboard for on the whole thing. Toby, did that help going through it again? Now ink it so they can see the when you're putting it together. They're having trouble when okay. they're putting it together. Oh, when okay. They're, when they're putting when you're putting it together. Okay, so, and so they can't see the marks. Yes. <laughs> okay, so first thing is fold it on your score marks. And where you've got the valley, like the side that you scored on, fold it away from that. The side that has the little mountain created that little bump, you're going to fold it into that. So first fold all your pieces. And I can do that. I can ink it up. You'll be able to see. <clears throat> okay, and then fold the others. So you've got a small flap. And then you've got a, another one that's only a quarter of an inch away from that one on the, the right side. And then you've got the bigger flap on the left side. <clears throat> okay, there's one. And now I'm going to do the second one just the same. There's the big flap, and I've got the small flap, and then the quarter of an inch away from it. Okay, now I will go slow as I glue it, and I will ink the edges here so that you can see. Let me grab not black. How about I just use vintage photo that should work even on craft I probably could use black and then put some paper on it that would look good with black okay so I'm going to set these two pieces of paper right next to each other and they're identical large flap on the left small flap on the right large flap on the left small flap on the right you know what I didn't do <coughs> let me get us up here on YouTube that'll help me be able to see what they see. <clears throat> I'm full. Okay. I'm full heel the eighth. I am. Yeah. Thanks, Henry. <laughs> uh, Toby, are you making it with us? And are you with me to this point? And Sheila, I know you came in a couple minutes later. So are you with me to this point? <clears throat> there we go. Okay, Toby. Toby's with us. Okay, second piece, same as the first. Yeah. Margie, stop it. You're going to have me singing, and that is not good for my throat. Okay, let me ink this real quick so you can see. Hopefully you can see. I should Maybe I should ink it in pink or something that will really stand out, right? I might have to do it in black if that doesn't. Okay. Okay, can you see this fold now? So I've got two of these side by side with the large fold on the left, the large flap on the left, and the small flap on the right. <clears throat> and <clears throat> so you can see this, this fold right here. I'm going to leave it folded and I'm going to overlap this one over the, the so the large flap of the right is folded and I'm going to overlap the center large piece of this piece. I'm going to over that, lap that over the small flap of the one that's down below it. And that's where I'm going to glue it. Now the one that's down below it, let me ink these in reverse here. The one that's down below it, you've got two score marks. There we go. Okay, the one that's down below it, you've got two score marks. So when you fold it on both of them, there's a quarter inch spine right there. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece that is folded, with this flap up, and I'm going to glue it onto the small flap. And I want to make sure that I go right up to the first score mark 
but that I don't go on top of the first score mark because I need that to still be able to fold because that's my spine. That's your gusset that lets you put stuff in the folio and have the things inside, the folding piece inside, and it, and it stays closed. So can you see here's the first score mark, and there's the second score mark right there. They're a quarter inch apart. I'm going to bring this one right up to, but not on top of, that second score mark. Actually, it's the first one you come to. Sorry. If you're coming in this direction, it's the first one that you come to. So you should still be able to see that quarter inch that you scored in there. Does that make sense? Okay. So the easiest way to glue that is to take the smallest of the two pieces you're gluing together. So I'm gluing the back of this one to this little guy here. If I put glue on here, I don't know where to stop. So I'm going to put glue on the small flap so I know exactly how much glue I need. <clears throat> so remember, I want to stop right before this first score mark. So when I glue this on, I should still see both score marks and that quarter inch gully right there. So I'm going to put a little glue down the side, across, that's not across, that's up and down, <laughs> depends which way you turn it, up and down, across the top, down the other side, and then a little bit down the middle just to hold it all together. Okay, now I'm back to the right one. I've got it folded. This is my large flap that's folded leaving the small flap over here. I'm just going to pick it up with this folded and I'm going to set it on top of the small one right where the glue is. I wanna make sure that my top and bottom are in alignment so it's straight, so my folio will close straight. And I wanna make sure that I don't go across that first score mark. So I can pick it up like this and make sure that I haven't crossed that first score mark. If I've crossed it, this is not gonna bend up so easily. So there's two score marks on this one right here. And I can see that it will fold on the first one. Okay, so I have glued it up against the first score mark. And I'm just going to make sure that is down good and tight. And I don't really worry about getting really super close to the edge because once I put that on, if I need to, I can take this skinny little pointy thing here and I can go inside the edge there. I could also go inside the edge here if I didn't get up close enough to the edge on some, some spots. Probably won't matter, but I can do that at any point along the way. So down the road, I feel like that's not on well enough. I can add a little there. Okay, then... I'm going to take the third piece, and this is the piece that I just scored down the middle, and I'm going to fold that, and I will go ahead and ink that. Maybe I should have found some paper to do this with white. I thought about white, but I thought white against a lot of these that have a white background just wouldn't show it very nice. You can see it with the craft, as long okay. as you ink it. I mean, okay, so there's my... I'm confused. I'm not first putting them together. Okay. So there's my fold. I'm going to leave that fold on the outside. And I'm going to take the left side of this. It's just as if it was a little program that opens like that. Take that left side. And I'm going to put it in underneath the big flap of the right. I still have those two pieces side by side, right? Here's the left one with the big flap. The little flap is glued underneath. Here's the right one with the big flap. And the, the little flap is on the right. So now I'm going to take the one I folded in half and I'm going to stick it underneath or into that the big flap on the right-hand side. And that's where it's going to live. So all I want to do is glue down three sides of this so I can leave this as a pocket. So I'm going to put my thumb on the top because obviously the pocket has to be on the top. And I'm going to glue, I'm sorry, I say the top, but really it's the left side. I keep thinking of the point of entry as the top. It's not. It's the left side. 
I'm going to put some glue across the top. I'm going to put some glue across the bottom. And I'm going to put a bead of glue. I don't want to glue that. Oh, it's too many things there. I'm going to put a bead of glue across the bottom here just to give it a little extra security because this is kind of hanging out there in the center of this. And it's going to be weighty when it's got um, cardstock on it and pockets and tags and different things on it. And all this is all that's holding this piece in, literally. So that's why I'm giving it three sides of glue, not just two. Unless you glue it all the way down. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, you can. You can glue it all the way down. If you accidentally put glue, on, and it's not really accidental. It's This is one of those, here's your choice. You can either leave that as a pocket or you can glue the whole thing down and have this be one solid page. Now, the difference might be on what you want to use it for. If you like to make folios that are going to be for photos, photo folios, you're going to put pictures in here. This is perfect for four by six pictures. So if you're going to make it for pictures, you might want to glue this down and have this just be one solid page because you can put a background piece on there and have plenty of room to mount uh, photos on there. Okay, is everybody with me till there? So now I've got this centerpiece that just folded in half. It's attached, making a pocket, and I still have that base on the bottom. So we'll still leave it just like that. We'll come over to the one on the far left, and we're going to glue just the little top and the little bottom to make this one a pocket. So a little bead across the top a little bead across the bottom. And this one doesn't need one <coughs> down the side <coughs> because it's attached to itself. It's one solid piece of paper. Okay, so when I put that down, make sure I burnished and give it a few seconds to dry. Now I have a pocket here and I have a pocket here and I have this piece that folds over and I have two solid pieces here, and I have my closure flap right there. And see that quarter inch that you scored? That's what this is. Quarter inch over here for a side spine, a quarter inch over here for the other side spine. So when you have these foldy pieces inside, and then if you fill it up with cards and tags and or photos, that kind of stuff, there's plenty of room for it and it will still stay closed. <clears throat> Ta-da! <laughs> so you can be thinking about, maybe in, maybe it's based on what paper you're using, um, how you want to close it. Whether you want to put um, a magnet or two magnets down. If you do, you want to put them down before you put this piece of paper down. And you want to put them on the, the top here before you put this piece of paper down. And then they will just magnetize that way. Maybe you choose to use an eyelet or a brad and have it go around. Maybe you want to use um, one of the um, like buttons, but not with the buttonholes, but the round, what, or what do you call them? The round button kind of closures and put um, a thin Policy elastic closure. on it. What is it? Policy closure. Policy closure. Yeah, thank you. Um, but you can be thinking about how you want to close it. Um, so before you put your paper down, you can decide. Now, this could be the one that you keep as your prototype. You could stick it inside your idea book or put it on the shelf with your idea book. So you always have a prototype and you can write down the instructions, stick it in there with you, with it. You can make these anytime. Once you've made up one or two, you can just whip these out in no time at all, including decorating. You could whip one out in an hour. And it makes a really nice gift for somebody. You can make photo mats so they could use it as a, a photo book for a special occasion if you wanted. Or fill it full of journal cards so somebody could use it for that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the first one, the blue one that I did. And yeah, I can see how that would be hard to see um, because it's all just dark, solid. We've got the pocket there and the pocket there. This flips over to solid, 
sides and the back. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is choose the paper that is going to be my front cover. And I'm digging for a lozenge that I covered up with all my paper. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to use Sunset Beach. This is one of the new Minte ones. And I like to do my front cover, at least choose my front cover first before I start cutting up paper and then realize I cut up a good scene that I would love to have as the front cover. So I used eight and a half by 11 paper. So I know that my folio is eight and a half tall. So whatever my dimension is, I'm going to leave off a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch will give me an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So every time I go to measure one, I know that they're all going to be eight and a half tall, which means I want to cut them eight and a quarter, right? So I could do this because we've got several pages and I'll forget. So I know that, that they're all going to be in height. I'm going to cut them eight and a quarter. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but you can do that next to you to make it a little easier. Okay. And then I want you to notice the size of this page, the, the front cover. Now these are going to be different. The size of this one, which was the one that was folded in half. It is not as big because it fits inside, right? So it's going to be the same height, but it's not as wide. So the other side of it is the same. And the back of it will be the same, but these two are not the same. This is part of the one that's folded in half. And so it's going to be five and a half because remember I scored that 11 inch at five and a half. So those are going to be by five and a quarter. I'm only going to take a half, a quarter of an inch off. So eight and a quarter, this will be my inside one. So I'm going to put that down here a little below by five and a quarter. Okay, and I'll write inside. Those are my smaller, my full panels, but they're smaller inside ones. This outside cover is larger. This inside back cover is larger, and the outside back cover is larger. So let me measure this. I'm going to measure the whole, not just the paper I've cut, but the whole uh, black from one end, one side to the other side. That is six. Okay, this one should be the same because I scored it the same. So <laughs> French cover. Kayla cheated and used it. She used printed double sided cardstock. She's all decorated. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh man. Now she just has to fill it with uh, oh. with stuff. Yeah, nice. Okay, so the cover is six. And the back cover, exactly the same, should also be six. It is. And then that means the inside of the back cover is also six because it's the same piece of paper, right? So I know that these large ones on the outside, if they're six and I cut it down by a quarter of an inch, then I need them to be five and three quarters. Okay, so the larger ones, I need eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. And that is one for the cover two for the back cover, and three for the inside of the back cover. So I can make a note that I just want, I need three of those. And then I know I'm going to need eight and a quarter by five and a quarter. It's not quite as wide for the inside one that I folded in half, not the ones that have the pockets on them. Those are different. I'm talking about the full panels. So one, two, three. So I know I'm going to need three of those full panels on the inside that are a little bit smaller. Okay. And then we'll deal with these smaller pieces later. So I want to pick the ones that are largest first because I want the good scenes to be in the large, the large uh, pieces. If I cut up good scenes to be little ones and then I don't have anything that looks cool to put on those and I end up with just a bunch of sky that doesn't seem very exciting now, does it? 
Okay, so my cover, I know it needs to be eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. So I'm going to look through these and this is 12 by 12. So I know I'm going to be cutting it down to eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. So when you look at the piece of paper, don't look at it as a whole. Look at it in sections. I only need eight and a quarter tall. I only need five and three quarters wide. So you can literally cut it in half. Hmm. Or you could take a chunk out of the middle and find a scene that you like because we can use the smaller cuts for those other pieces. I'm not sure that that thrills me for the cover. Ooh, I do like the back of that piece of paper though. Not for the cover, but I really like that. That's pretty, but again, not um, hitting me for the cover. Hmm. Should have looked through this one before, before I chose it, huh? All right. Should look all the way through it before I decide. Maybe the one I had in mind was Joy of Life. I saw pretty. Okay, so there's the cards. I can set the cards aside because I'll use those last. So I'm going to go ahead and just set those aside. And I'm going to set my fussy cuts aside too. I can use those to decorate with less. If you don't happen to have the um, die cuts, I don't have any up here with me. I may end up having to fussy cut. Okay, and I'm going to go back here and choose a scene. This is called Sunset Beach. So what do I want to be? And remember, you can take this off of the branding strip here and put that somewhere too, to be like a title. That is really pretty. <clears throat> Okay, that would make a really pretty um, about there. That's cutting too much of the flowers off. That's where it ended up being right there, about eight and eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. That would be a pretty scene. This is a pretty scene too, but I'm not sure I want the front cover to be a fan and a drink. You know, that's more like the back cover. <clears throat> Okay, this would be pretty. This would be pretty here. Okay, about down the middle, because five and three quarters and eight and a quarter. It's going to give me about that. Or if I want to put some kind of decoration on the front, I could go with something that has open space. <clears throat> Am I missing pages? Uh, no. All right. Ooh, that's pretty too. Okay. So this one doesn't give us as many options with scenes, but there are lots of good backdrops. So I have two choices here. I can either choose one of the scenes as it is and say, all right, I like that. I'm going to go with that. Or I can choose something that is a backdrop one of these uh, tiles, I really like those, or one of the flowers. And I could fussy cut out some things to put on there. But let's see. I am going to five and three quarters, eight and a quarter. I'm just going to get a little bit of that umbrella in, and I can probably glue an embellishment on top of the umbrella so we don't really see that it's a beach umbrella and that would make a pretty a pretty front cover right <laughs> <coughs> a pretty front cover all right so i'm going to like the beach oh me too i love the colors very pretty. okay so this one now you could just go cut it across if you want to go from the top, cut at eight and a quarter, and you'll have some on the bottom here to use. Or you could cut it down the middle and cut it at five and three quarters wide and then deal with that. And I know I'm getting kind of, um, I don't know what the word is here, but Minte especially always has more than one scene on the paper. 
And I like to try to keep the scenes together as much as I can. Because even though I like this for the front cover, I might really like this for something else. You know, maybe the back cover. So I am going to do this. First, I'm going to cut off the branding strip. And sometimes I go right into the center of the piece of paper and choose the section that I want. And I will still try to keep as much of it together around it as I can to use the scenes elsewhere. Okay, I need five and three quarters across and eight and a quarter down. So if I'm going eight and a quarter down, which is tall, sorry, my, I may not uh, say the words as you know them. This is just how I talk to myself. Eight and a quarter. Gonna be right. I'm just putting a tiny little pencil mark where eight and a quarter is. And I'm actually going to <clears throat> cut five and three quarters down and I'm going to try to stop about where that eight and a quarter is so I can leave this whole thing the bottom and this side over here together as a scene okay so I'm at five and three quarters I'm going to go down where's my mark for eight and a quarter it should be right about there okay I get close if I do it on the little my small guillotine I can get it almost perfect every time. I can't see this rotary cutter. I can't see it as well. Okay, and now I've got to turn it over to the other side because I need to be able to see eight and a quarter from this end, not the other end. Okay. Did I make it all the way over? I think I did. Okay. There's my eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. And that's pretty. And you really don't even tell that that's a beach umbrella. But I left together at least one scene there. Maybe two. So that's how I do that. Okay. So this is going to be my front cover. Let me pull this back out here. Now... I noticed when we looked through this that I'm kind of short on scenes. There's a lot of good backgrounds, but there's not so many scenes in this one. So I'm going to go through and choose my back cover now. Anything that I want a scene for, I'm going to choose it now so that I make sure um, that I don't just cut them up. I could go to this same That could, would go just, this is uh, six and a quarter, so a half an inch over. Or I could even cut off some of this side. Nope, I couldn't. I could only go to there. But I could get part of that chair. Nah, not necessary. Okay, so I could get this little beachy thing in right here. The umbrella, the sunset, the lifeguard station. I could cut that up a bit and get most of this flower in right here. That would be very pretty. Our only other scenes. Let's see. <clears throat> I think I'll put these on the insides. That's a pretty one too. Because it's called Sunset Beach, and I think I'm going to use the words off the branding strip and put them somewhere on the front, on my front cover. Okay, so I didn't know how I was going to use this. Had I known how I was going to use it, I could have just gone all the way down here. But I didn't know. What it did was save me this scene across the bottom if I wanted to cut this as one and put it on one of those smaller pockets or the uh, flap on the cover. But I'm going to use this. So I know that it's going to be eight and a quarter tall. Let's see, eight and a quarter takes me where... I wonder if I could get just a little more of that flower in. I could probably cut a little bit of this sand off down here. And get a little... There we go. Okay. So, can you just make sure it's eight and a quarter? Okay. 
There we go. I almost cut the sunglasses off. I wanted those on. Okay, and now it needs to be five and three quarters wide. So I need to decide which side do I want to take that off of. I think this side, although I do want to make sure that the sun stays in there. So if I have to take a little off here and a little off there, because I don't remember exactly how wide it was. I know it's at least six. Um, it is six and a quarter. And it needs to be five and three quarters. So I need to take a half an inch off. So I'm going to take just a hair off of, not a hair. I'll take a, almost a quarter inch off of that one. Not quite. And the rest is just going to have to come off this side because I want that sun to be in the picture. So five and three quarters. There we go. Five and three quarters. And that is the back cover. Okay. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and glue the back cover on. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to close it. So I'm not going to glue the front cover on yet, but I am going to leave this set aside. And in fact, on the back of it, I'm going to write front cover just in case I look at it and say, oh, that would be great for, you know, something inside. I won't accidentally use it. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one on the back cover. Now, when you look at the back cover, you have a gusset here. This is one spine, spine on one of the sides. And you have a gusset over here. This is a spine on the other side. So your back cover should fit right between those two giving you about an eighth of an inch on each side, and you should still have that quarter inch spine there. Okay, so I'm gonna open that up all the way. I'm gonna press it out flat because I can see my marks. I can see where it's folded, so I know exactly where I need to be inside of. And where's my glue? Again, you could use uh, double stick, stick tape on this. Um, any, you know, whatever your favorite adhesive is will work on this just fine. So I'm going to put some around the perimeter. If I was using double stick tape, I would put a line around the perimeter just like this. And then put some on the inside. Barely art or art glitter just needs a little bit there. Okay. And then I'm going to go over here. And, oh, my eye's all blurry. <laughs> um, I want to get it left to right. And then I want to get it top to bottom. And I'm not pushing it down yet because I know I have a second. Uh, that's about all I have, but I have a second. Uh, I've got a shadow over there. If I need to move it. Oh, my goodness. I can't see. i got a big old shadow. <laughs> oh, woe is me, right? <laughs> there we go. Once it's down, just press it all along. If you got glue on the outside, no big deal. It dries clear. Oh, we even got a little bird in the sky. Very cool. Okay, so there's our back cover. Yay! Got a back cover and this will be the front cover. Okay, so now we have one more that's that same size. That's the larger size and that's this one. When we open it up, we've got this flap, but this one right here is the only other one that is larger. So I'm going to choose that one next because it is the largest one that's left. All right, I used that one. I could use that one. Or that one. I'm going to go with a scene. So I'm just going to pull those two out and say those two will be my choices for right here. <clears throat> that is really pretty. Okay. Now, here's where you can also do some tricky little things. I know that I need five and three quarters for this large piece. And I know that I need five and a quarter here for this one. I know I also need an eighth of an inch border around all of them. And I know that together does not equal 12 inches because this 12 inch piece of paper is bigger than both of them. There's my edge right there. 
It's bigger than both of them and doesn't even allow for borders. So I could, let's see, I think I did one in here like this. I can put the entire clock on these two pages. So you see it as one large picture. Hi, Christy. Hey, Christy. I could do that with this scene, which is kind of cool. So this balcony fence right here, it can cut right down the middle of that and that can go over on this half. I think I'll do that because that seems pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so I know they need to be eight and a quarter tall. And because I'm going to use the whole thing across, I'm going to cut it across the bottom at eight and a quarter which will leave me, let's see, let me first see where that's gonna cut. If that cuts right into, and it does, it's gonna cut right here. I'd really like to get a little more of that balcony and I'm okay cutting off a little bit of this sky here, but I would like to have the balcony in there and you know all this part right here. So if I take that down, let's see, what is it, eight and a quarter? Hmm, I have to make sure. Just add a little bit more on there so we can see that. What's that going to leave me up on top? It's going to bring me down about an inch. That's okay. I'm okay with that. This kind of reminds me of Cabo. Anybody been to Cabo? These rocks, the rocks, the shape of the rocks, the color of the rocks. Ooh, there's some pretty sun that, or a sunset that would make a... A nice smaller strip. Okay, so this piece is going to go across these two pages right here, and I wanted to get this whole balcony in, so now I need to cut the top down. I need it to be eight and a quarter, so eight and one quarter right there. There we go. All righty. So I know it's the right height now for both of them. And I know they're both the exact same height. So I know when I split them and I line them up with one H inch uh, around the edge that they're going to be perfectly lined up. Does that make sense? To put together as one picture. So now I just need to decide where I'm going to cut it down the middle. This is my larger piece over here and it needs to be five and three quarters wide. If I even just put this up to eyeball it, where's my, where's my center? There's my center. Just putting it up to eyeball it. I know that it's going to need to go to about here. And then the next one. Okay, I'm good with that. So I'm just going to go five and three quarters. And then the other side, I don't want to cut it off the middle because I want my balcony to line up. So I'm going to cut it off the left side. And this one is this one of the smaller ones on the inside. So it's eight and a fourth tall and it needs to be five and a quarter wide where the big ones were five and three quarters. So five and one quarter tall. I know Christy made one of these. She knocked it out of the park too. It was beautiful. Margie, have you already made one? Okay, so I can set these up here before I glue them on and just see that I didn't forget something. They're both gonna fit perfectly and my balcony is gonna be perfectly lined up. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and glue them on. All the way around the perimeter. Forgive me for not talking, laughing, singing, whatever. <laughs> Just trying to save a little bit of the voice. Candy, you're supposed to be talking, laughing, singing for me. Uh, I'm trying not to make you talk more. <laughs> They're not saying much in chat. Oh. They're paying attention to what you're doing. Ah. Uh, so. 
I didn't even ask who all's making with us tonight. Sheila, I know There's that. Paper you picked. Thank you, Christy. It's that new Minte Sunset Beach. There's that side. And let's get this one. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious as soon as we finish to show you a couple that have some variations to them. I'm telling you, this is just a fun one. Once you get this base down, it's you'll just want to keep making them. She was right. Keep making them and, and keep adding little things to them. And it can be used for so many things. If you know people that do like to um, put photos from a, a trip or something, this is a perfect folio. Because, you know, you can take a million pictures on a trip. You don't really use them all. You come back and you maybe pick a dozen, if that, favorites. So you really don't need space for tons and tons. You can also stick more in the pockets if you want. Okay. So that's a very pretty scene. So these pages are solid, but these are pages where you could mount a, um, a photo backing to put a photo on if you're going to give it to somebody, where you could put a tuck spot in the corners or a pocket. If you put a tuck spot and then you could put photo cards in the tuck spots that somebody could mount a photo on. Or if they don't do photos, I, I always mean to, and I never do, um, put journal cards, put journal cards, a nice folio with a journal cards to just to take for a short trip, a weekend and record things is really nice. Okay. So we've got our front decided, although not glued down. We've got our back chosen back cover and the other large one inside. And we've got one here. So the only other two solid piece ones are this and the other side of that one on the flap. All right, so let's choose something for those. Now this is the one with, with the Lady Vagabond <clears throat> that I used her books and just cut it exactly in half. Actually, I put the piece of paper down first and then I kind of fussy cut around the books and measured it and cut the books exactly in half and just glued them on top of the paper. So if we flip it over, you look like you're, it looks like you're still looking at her shelf. Toby's taking off. Bye Toby. Thanks for coming. She's going to go babysit the grandkids. Have fun. Oh, cool. oh, that's yeah. Lots of fun. Okay. So um, and I got to remember that I can always put, uh, tuck spots or pockets or things on these too. So if I want them to be some of these solid ones that I really like. So this one, a tile like this, I could take it down the middle and put, put it on where that middle goes right up to the side, center it top to bottom and have that cool design would look just like this coming out that way. Or I could center this on there and get the design going from the center out and you just get whatever fits on the page. So that's two different ways to use a background like that. Let me see what our other, I think I would like to have a couple backgrounds on there. That's pretty. Oh, these flowers are really pretty too. Some wicker, that's the same one. Now this is interesting because this is virtually the same flower. I thought it was the same flower pattern, but it's not. It is so close and the colors are slightly different. This one has a dark peach on it. And this one has blue flowers on it, which are very cool looking. But don't want those. So, ooh, I do like that one too. All right. Um, 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 um. I think, I think, I think those would look cool, wouldn't they? Pull out the blue in that. And then this one. Yeah, same one with that. Pull out the pink in that. That would be pretty. Okay. See, I don't ever decide these ahead of time so that you can watch the process of 
how I decide what I'm going to use. Oh, Domestic Wild is here. Hey, Kelly. Good to see you. Laura's here. I didn't see her hey, earlier. Laura? Man. Laura, sitting back Hello, there. Laura. <laughs> Like they're working right next to a little bit. Out. I say, wait, I'll wake up before Saturday Night Live. Yeah, sure. right. yeah. <laughs> of course, I will. My brain will know when to wake me up. Yeah, you know what? We should have a um, a foghorn tuned into Laura's house. So if she's not here, we can just set the foghorn off <laughs> and wake her up because we know she just overslept and she'd want to be awake, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that I might want, oh, let's see, where does that go? If I put that right down the middle, it would go out to the circle. That would be cool. And this one. Not crazy about those glass wind chimes, but they would look cool right there. I kind of like that one ties in the flowers over here. All right, fine. I'll quit thinking about it and just do it. I can hear you. <laughs> just cut <got> one. <laughs> uh, okay. So these are the two smaller ones on the inside. So I know that they need to be eight and a quarter by five and a quarter. And I love when it's just a flower pattern or a background because there's not much decision to make. Let's see here. I'm going to cut off this branding strip because I may use it. All right. Eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. So if this was eight and a quarter, the only thing that I really look at here is if that's eight and a quarter, what, where are the flowers going to be placed? If I want to make sure there's flowers right in the middle, do I need to go like this? Eight and a quarter. If I put a pocket or something, it's probably going to be down here. So having more flowers up on top, it sounds like it might be a better choice. So, okay, eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. Is that right? Nope, five and a quarter. This is the smaller one. Five and a quarter. Eight and three quarters by five and a quarter. Okay, and I need a second one. This one is going to go right here. So I'm just going to let me just double check it, make sure it's seems just a hair taller than that one. Not sure why, but I'm going to trim it just a hair and I do much better with that with my little guillotine. Just, yeah, that much. That's all. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and glue this down while I remember where it's supposed to go. I keep forgetting where I put my glue. So, guys, this is a good time to tell you. We were supposed to give away Debbie's uh, folio tonight with a drawing. And the challenge was to... What? Cheryl Goble, was she in here earlier? Cheryl, I don't, I didn't remember seeing her. Hi, she Cheryl. She like that uh, paper collection. Oh, cool. Thank you. Sunset Beach, Mente Sunset Beach. That's the one. Thank you. Um, a lot of you had more than 12 people invited into Facebook, into the Facebook group, but nobody had 12 of their invitees subscribe to the YouTube channel. So we actually had nobody qualify. This is this to me is one of those things that you really take notice of because I know 
that there's a lot of you that thought, oh, there will be so many people that do it. I know I don't even have a chance of winning, you know, not going to bother or, you know, whatever. And if one person had had 12 people of that they invited into Facebook subscribe to the YouTube channel, that one person would have won. Um, that's all it would have taken because there's nobody giving you competition. So Debbie's folio will not be given away because that was her challenge. And I know that took 25 to 30 hours to make. And um, we're going to stick with what the challenge was. Okay. So let's see here. All right. Where was the, did I put it back here? The one with the blue on the back. So I think what I will do is, and I'll probably need till the end of the month to get this together. I will go through and take everybody who invited 12 people, had pe had 12 people join in the Facebook group um, in during this contest period. And I will take everybody who had 12 new friends come in and I will put them in a drawing. Um, it, they made at least half of the challenge. So I will give them half of the prize and I will give them a small, I, I will have a drawing for one person. So Debbie's was a large folio. It took a lot of time to make very beautiful. Um, that one wasn't one that required the full challenge. So I will give a half a challenge winner, the folio that I'm making tonight. So that's why I'm trying to make sure that it looks really nice, not just randomly pick paper. So, so I will draw from everybody who had 12 um, come in this month. And let's see, I think, what do I, which way do I want to go? Um, I'm, 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 I'm decisions. Or said, oh, heck, you have to trim it to the right size and glue it straight? That is worse than <laughs> <laughs> said, you she knows she dropped the ball and the cards sitting out because work went weird, but I will yeah. try to keep up. No, that's okay, and I can help you with that, Laura. Um, 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 um. I feel like I'm making a decision for somebody else, so <laughs> I think I'm going to do it right down the middle. And get that half. It's almost like a half a mandala. I got to take off the branding strips so we can use that. Lucy said it was a tough challenge. It was, well, we had a lot of people that got 12 people to the Facebook. Oh, yes, a lot. A we lot. Just, we just didn't get them over to the YouTube channel. To YouTube, right. And I think um, a lot of people accepted the invitations into Facebook. And even, even some of you who said, I don't have anybody to invite had more than 12 people come in. Um, uh, and I, some people might've been surprised, but yeah, there was, um, we increased by a hundred people in a week um, yeah. in the Facebook group. Now, what I believe happens is that a lot of people accept our invitation into the group, but then never really came back into the group to see what was going on in the group. And so they wouldn't have seen, because I posted multiple times um, when I did the welcome post, I put the link to YouTube and ask everybody to take a minute and go, um, you know, subscribe. And I posted a couple of times just with the YouTube link as a regular post, asking all the new people to go over and subscribe. So I think a lot of people just didn't come back in the group to see what was going on and go, oh, I should go subscribe to that as well. So we have to think of um, something else. So it's easy to invite people into the Facebook group because that invite comes up in Facebook. But how can we invite people to YouTube? That's what we need to figure out. All right. I want this right in the middle. And I want this to come out here like a half a mandala right here. And so I know that this, I keep double checking myself because I don't trust my brain right now. This needs to be five and a quarter high. Okay. So if I, all right, now we're going to do math candy. 
five and a quarter. Wait, wait, I don't do math in public. <laughs> I do it. I'll do math in my head. <laughs> five and a quarter. I want half of five and a quarter because that's where my center point needs to be. So half of five is two and a half, right? Half of um, a quarter is an eighth. So two and a half plus an eighth. See, you can always make math easy, guys. It doesn't have to be a big calculator. Yep, it does not have to be a big calculator deal. Okay, so two and a half plus an eighth is how you get five, half of five and a quarter. There you go. So I'm going to do that right there. I'm going to flip it around and put it at five and a quarter. Oh, that seems, no, it's five and a quarter wide. Oh, Candy. You're, you're not. <laughs> five and a, I know I'm not thinking clearly. It's five and a quarter wide. It's eight and a half. It's eight and a quarter tall. They're all eight and a quarter tall. It's five and a quarter wide. And I already did the five. No, I didn't. Okay. That doesn't matter. I've got the other half. Okay. I need eight and a quarter tall. Yeah, do scrap first. Oh, shoot. Okay. So that's four and an eighth is the center. These are fine. I'll use them on smaller pieces or, you know, smaller sections. Four and an eighth is my center. So here's my center and there is four and an eighth. And I'm going to give it a little bit of leeway. I'd rather trim it off than be short. Okay. So my center right here should go to four and an eighth. And I am a little long on that side, which I expected. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to, I'd rather cut a, have to cut a couple little uh, edges off than come up a quarter inch short. <laughs> Sylvia says she asked Alexa. <laughs> uh, yeah. What is, oh, wow. That's funny. I never even thought about that. Hi, Sylvia. Okay. So there is eight and a quarter tall. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Five and a quarter wide. That's easy. We don't need to split that in half. Five and a quarter right there. Five and a quarter. Okay. There we go. Now, when I'm gluing these things on, I'm turning this around and setting it somewhere else. I never glue anything on without double checking. Where am I? Where's the front? Which is the back to make sure it's right side up. Cause you know, am I the only person that's ever glued a piece of paper on upside down? Yep. Cause I didn't check yep. to see if it was right side up. <laughs> never done that. Ever. So, never, ever. <laughs> never, ever have I ever, um, I could actually put this this way. So it goes out or I could put it this way. So it goes in. Either way, should look. I'm looking at YouTube because it's a bigger, better picture and see what it looks like. I like it that way. This way? Yeah. Okay, cool. I I do too. It looks good either way, actually. Yeah, yeah it does. I just like that circle on that end. I do too. Okay, so let's glue that down so we don't forget where it goes. Alrighty. I am going to line it up left to right and then top to bottom. Come on. I try not to push it down. I just kind of set it there because that I really found that I can get an extra second out of the art glitter glue if I need to move it around. If I don't push it down, but I just kind of gently set it on top. Okay, so that's nice. All right, so now we've got, we haven't put our front cover on yet, but we've got our front cover decided. And I'm going to go ahead and put the front cover on because I think I know what kind of closure I want to do. So I'm going to put that on here. That is pretty, that backside too. Okay. 
Now, what I didn't tell you that you needed because it's optional, and I didn't think about it, I never think about it till it's time to do it, is a corner rounder. I corner round some and I don't corner round others and not the whole thing, only the flap of the lid. So let me get this left to right, top to bottom. I have to pick it up or open the whole thing up and lay it out. Otherwise I see the blue behind it of the others and it's hard to tell if you've got it on yeah. the exact right the panel. Okay, so we've got our front cover. We've got our first flip. We've got that inside flip. We've got the back, we've got that, and we've got our back cover. So all we have left is these pieces that are not whole panels, because we've got a pocket here, so we have two, and a pocket here, so we have two, right? So, well, and the closure, and this. So we'll need one down here, and then we need one down here. So on some, I have rounded these and some I have not. I like the quarter inch and all I do is just the two corners, the two corners of the flap. That's it. And if I do that, I will do, I will do those two corners of the piece I cut to go right there. All it does is soften it up a little bit. And I think um, for the beach, that's kind of nice. Lady Vagabond is not rounded but I think for the sunset beach, it would be nice and a uh, softer corner. So that's very pretty. Okay, so now, um, oh, I may still need this big one. I really like just using my small, small guillotine. Uh oh, left my glue out too long. Left the pin out too long. Okay, I think I'm gonna pull this up because I do tend to use it a lot. And I do like that it fits right in the middle of that one. But now I need some of these other pieces. I will see what I can use of these before I cut up another large one. But odds are I'm going to cut up another large one because I want... So I, I can't use these small ones because I know it needs to be eight, eight and a quarter. And they're not tall enough. But I could use these. Uh, I could use that. And that. Okay. So odds are I'm going to end up cutting up another one because I'm going to want whatever it is on the back. Okay, so I can look and decide, is there something in particular that I want on the flap of the cover? Margie says just gnaw off, gnaw off the corners. Just <laughs> activate fever mode, Laura said. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> Okay, Marianne, we're, all, we're almost at, at half past. Oh, really? Something. Think, okay. Wrap it up because you're not feeling well. <laughs> the idea and we can finish them I'm hurrying. I'm, I'm hurrying. I just want it to be finished. I don't want it to sit I here. Know, but, but you need to go lay down. Does she not, ladies? I, I don't want to hear her voice. And <laughs> she doesn't really like hearing my voice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. I know I scored both of these at three. So they should be three. I'm double checking them, but they should be three, which means these two panels are little, small panels for the pocket is going to need to be cut at two and three quarters. And they're all eight and a half tall. So eight and a quarter by two and three quarters. That's what's going on there. So. Yes, they're all saying self-care first. <sighs> they're all saying get out of here, Marianne. We're sick of you. <laughs> We saw you, you. You measured it out for us. You can show us how you're going to do one. That's it. Then hilarious. Okay. Off camera, where you don't have to talk. Fine. Okay. Two and a half. <laughs> it's two and a quarter. Says it was a great tutorial. And fearless leader needs to go put her head down. Yes. She's oh my like, goodness. But you guys make me feel better spending time with you. <laughs> You need to go lay down and stop talking. And I'm not a talker, ladies. <laughs> it makes me feel better to spend time with you guys. Yeah, I I, I know you're right. You need to go lay down because the rest is going to be the best thing for you for this. All right. I'll go finish you're it in right. silence. <laughs> Don't take care of you. Oh, goodness. 
Okay, so I want to know who made one. I want to see some pictures in the book. I know uh, in the book, in the group. Oh, I got, well, I got one ready to go to decorate, but I got the one I finished the other day. Cool. Sheila, right, I, would right. to make one. I don't, I don't want to think that I just did this for the fun of it and nobody else made any, so. I, I have two ready to go, and I made some modifications on this one for that. Cool. Oh, okay. Okay, I will. I will end right here. I will finish that off camera. I do want to show you some variations, and then I'll go. <laughs> okay, yeah, show some variations. Okay. So y'all saw, well, some of you came in late, didn't see Lady Vagabond, notice all the little, uh, these are the what, some things you can do with the chipboard. And when you have those pages that have great big images and you don't know what to do with them, and this is where you can stick um cards that are large enough to hold photos you could make put a photo mat on this and put it in here you can put a four by six in there it holds just fine okay Ooh, look, look. she got two done nice sheila nice oh i'm excited i can't wait to see sheila's two done and a mini wow so yeah i'm gonna make these in a smaller size too okay so check this one out this is from atelier day arts and this one has dimensional things all through it. This is uh, the chipboard. This is chipboard. This one is held together with uh, magnets as well. I really like this one a lot. Okay, so there is the same pocket. And look, you can split. What do you do with those luggages? Luggages, split them right here between the pocket and the top of that. Dimensional elements here, the chipboard. What do you do with those frames? take the paper clip or the, the clothes pin, cut it up the middle and stick it on it like it's holding it onto your easel button there. Okay, there's the pocket right there. Dimensional um, paint, dimensional here. Here's a pocket, a corner tuck spot right here. This one had a lot of cool sayings with it. Let's see, okay, it goes this way. There's some dimensional pieces. Some of these I was able to put over the exact same thing that was on the paper. <laughs> what? They're all saying, good night, Marianne. <laughs> I want to show you this. <laughs> it's time to make this. I want to show you. <laughs> There's a pocket or a tuck spot right there. Tuck spot right there. <laughs> There's another pocket right there. So see this one. There's a whole nother a whole nother one folded in half added in. Okay, and then the herbarium. This is from Botany. This one is also held together with magnets. That one's pretty. Yeah, I like that one too. Um, yeah, you just decorate it however. Here's a, a corner tuck and a there's something in there, but I am not going to take time to open it. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, this one opens this way, and there's a pocket. So those big panels that there's nothing on, you can add a pocket if you're not going to do photo spots, because I'm not, and then tuck things in there, and then the pocket here, tuck things in there. And it also flips up the other way. And that one's a pocket there, and that one's a pocket there. And then a pocket here. I like this one a lot. So you can add one more piece of paper and get a whole bunch more flips. Oh, yeah. And on the back, I started making this to put, in, put inside of it, and I realized it was going to be too big. So I made this belly band to go on the back, and I fitted it to it. I'm ignoring them all. I'm just ignoring them. Good one, Sylvia. She's going through the languages now. <laughs> Who is Sylvia? Sylvia. <laughs> so this has a little oh. tuck with a teeny tiny botany book. <laughs> Sylvia, I'll deal with you in a minute. <laughs> There's a tag. This one's a belly band with cards. <laughs> and it does open one more. Yep, there it is. There you go. And then there's a pocket inside too. Aloha. Um, um, oh, I've lost all my languages. Never mind. All right, ladies. I'm going to go. I am drinking my boiling water with honey, lemon, and cayenne pepper. It burns the heck sure, out of your throat. throat. Vitamin C and get some rest. <laughs> yes, I will do that. I'll go out and do that right oh, now. Rockabye, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> throw her off. Uh, if she doesn't get out of the tree, we'll throw her off. 
<laughs> All right. I will finish this one because by the end of the month, I will have the names together and we'll do a drawing and I will give this one away to somebody who took the time to invite people into the Facebook group. Yes. Okay. Uh, Sheila, we need to see your. Yes, um, Sheila, um, Toby, I know she's gone, but if she made him, um, Margie, Christy, um, you guys, Sylvia, I expect you to make one. <laughs> Post them in the group. Um, Monday, Monday, Jumpstart, we are going to decorate the books that we made. So you've completed the cover. We've sewn in the signatures. You've glued in the hidden spine. Monday, we're going to decorate it. So spend some time tomorrow and go back through all the mass makes we've done all year long and pull out one of everything and even some other things that you have that we haven't mass made and let's get them decorated and, and get a really good idea book going for you. Margie, okay. shucks, do I have to? Yes, Margie, you have to. <laughs> you have to. I came here tonight instead of dying on the couch. So you have to. <laughs> I'm going to watch you go take, get some rest. So you I, I will, I will do that. I will go, um, yeah, Doug's poked his head in a couple of times. You're talking too much. So. Yes, exactly. And that's so. why I kind of called a halt to it, lady. She'll go until nine. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> all right. Good night. Um, I will get feeling better, and I will see you all Monday for Monday Jumpstart to decorate our books, okay? All right, it was fun. So, I love yeah. it.